welcome the topic we will be discussing in this lecture is antennas so basically here we will be discussing the different types of antenna so so antennas or something like a trans receiver that is it acts as a transmitter and also it acts as a receiver it couples the electro electromagnetic energy to and from the space or to and from any wired communication channel like coaxial cable or any other conductor the theoretical reference antenna is called as isotropic radiator theoretical reference antenna it is called as isotropic radiator which will radiate pattern of radi which will radiate pattern symmetric in all directions okay basically this antenna will radiate symmetrically it is equally in all direction but this is not a real antenna uh, there is no such antenna exist uh, which uh, we, in the real world which uh, which transmits symmetrically in all direction okay so this is just a theoretical reference antenna and, and it is not exist in reality and this is how it is represented uh, pictorially that is the the particular antenna uh, radiates symmetrically in all directions so this is the first type of antenna that we are discussing actually the real antennas are the actually the real antennas have some directive effects the real antennas they don't uh, uh, transmit or radiate signals symmetrically in all direction rather they are more focused to certain direction over other directions so now we will be discussing several uh, real antennas that are available so the next type of antennas that we will be discussing is called as directive antennas it's called as directive antennas so one of the example for directive antenna is dipole it's a simple real antenna it's a, it's a dipole it is called as dipole because because it consists of uh, it consists of two separate conductors it can it, it consists of two conductors of equal length which are separated by a feeding gap <laughs> basically this antenna it consists of two conductors of equal length and these conductors were separated by a feeding gap okay and the length of this dipole the length of this dipole antenna uh, will be equal to the half of the wavelength of the signal uh, that it is supposed to transmit okay so its length will be generally equal to lambda by 2 if the length is uh, the length of the this antenna is equal to the half of the wavelength of the signal that it's supposed to transmit then it will provide the best performance that is it will transmit or it will radiate energy uh, in 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 the in the best possible way if this antenna is mounted on a car then its length can be lambda by 4 generally its length should be lambda by 2 that is wavelength uh, half of the wavelength but if you are mounting this uh, antenna on a car uh, then its length can be lambda by 4 this antenna is also called as marconi antenna dipole antenna is also called as marconi antenna so how it uh, radiates energy uh, the how the how the, the pattern in which it radiates energy is specified in different planes so let us see that through a diagram so it has it has basically uniform or omnidirectional radiation pattern in one plane in one of the plane 
that is in xz plane it has uniform or omnidirectional radiation pattern but in the other two planes in xy plane and yz plane it has a pattern it has a radiation pattern uh, which is similar to the numeric 8 so basically this but type of radio what it does in the sense it just boosts the signal it just boosts the uh, signal okay and uh, it, the challenges about these antenna in the is that uh, it may not work uh, effectively in the areas where there are mountains valleys and buildings of there so so it can just boost the signal and uh, and 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 it can overcome few environmental challenges okay uh, but but it may not be effective where there are mountains valleys or or buildings are present so so this is how the dipole antenna looks like uh, you can see here its normal length will be lambda by 2 that is half of the wavelength if it is mounted on a car then its length can be lambda by 4 and these are its radiating pattern so this is in xz plan in, in xz plane it radiates uh, uniformly in all direction it's omnidirectional whereas in yz plane and xy plane its radiation pattern is something similar to the numeric 8 so and and basically it is it, it can it it what it does in the sense it, it boosts the energy and it can overcome few environmental challenges uh, but the drawback or the challenge uh, with respect to this antenna is it may not work properly uh, where there are mountains valleys and many buildings are present this is about dipole antenna <laughs> the next type of antenna that we'll be discussing is directional antenna the next type of antenna that we'll be discussing is directional antenna so the problem with the dipole antenna is it is uh, it cannot work properly with valleys uh, mountains or buildings whereas this directional antenna it can work it can also work properly uh, even if there is a valley or or in between buildings also it can work properly and these antenna it has it has fixed preferential transmission and reception direction so it has fixed uh, preferential transmission and reception direction. That is, uh, they are focused to one particular direction for transmission. And maybe they are focused to some other direction for reception. Sometimes the transmission and reception may be focused in the same direction also. That's not a, a issue, but, but they are focused on one particular uh, uh, direction for transmission and and maybe on the same or another direction for a reception. And by that, they avoid interferences. And by that, they avoid uh, interferences. Okay. So, so this diagram shows the uh, shows how the radiation pattern of directional antenna looks like. So in YZ plane, it is it, it looks like omnidirectional, but in XZ plane and XY plane, you can see. It is, it is very much focused in one direction and it is totally neglecting other directions. Okay. So these are called as directional antennas. And a good example for directional antenna is satellite dishes. Okay. So we have dish TV. So in dish TV, if you see the dish is actually uh, kept in such a way that it is, it, 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 it faces only one direction, right? One particular direction. So the opposite direction it totally ignores, right? Because the signal is going to come only from this direction. So it need not focus in other direction. So such antennas are called as directional antennas. Okay. So, so that's it about directional antenna. The next type of antennas that we'll be discussing is called as sectorized antenna. This sectorized antenna. So so what is a sectorized antenna? Several directional antenna can be combined on a single pole. 
several directional antennas can be combined on a single pole. Such antennas are called as sectorized antennas. Okay. And in case of cellular communication, in case of cellular communication, a cell can be sectored into three or six sectors. What is a cell? A cell represents the communication range of the base station. Cell represents the communication range of the base station. That is, the base station maximum to what extent it can communicate. This its communication, the communication range of the base station is called as cell. So cell can be divided into three or six sectors as shown in the below diagram. So why should we divide? By dividing it into sectors, the frequencies can be reused. So if the frequencies are reused, then, then it can support more customers. Okay. So such antennas are called as sectorized antenna. Fine. And the next type of antennas uh, that we'll be discussing is multi-element antenna arrays. Okay. So that's the next type of antenna that we'll be discussing. Multi-element antenna arrays. In with multi-element antenna arrays, two or more antennas are combined together. Two or more antennas are combined combined together to improve the reception. Because normally, when an electromagnetic signal is getting transmitted, they go through different types of uh, distortions like reflection, refraction, all these things, it happens, okay? So one antenna may not receive everything perfectly. So if you keep more than one antenna, signals from different directions can be received. And finally, uh, they can be added up and so, and useful information can be collected. So that is what this multi-element antenna arrays does. Two or more antennas are combined to improve the uh, reception, okay? So these antennas also support some diversity schemes. Okay, these they allow some diversity schemes. So there is one type of one such scheme is switched diversity or selection diversity. Switched diversity or selection diversity, which means that the receiver uses the antenna element with the largest output. Say here there are two antennas you are. Uh, say there are two antennas, for example, if you see this particular diagram, uh, there are two antennas are there, okay? And these two antennas are connected to some device, right? Maybe this antenna may have high reception power, okay? Or this antenna's output uh, may be high. And this antenna's output may not be that high. Then your receiver may, may always prefer to receive from this particular antenna. That is what it says. Switched or selection diversity means receiver uses the antenna element with largest output. Okay. Or say, for example, in the morning time, the data received through this antenna, uh, the output is high. But in the evening time, uh, the this antenna produces high output. So in the morning time, your device will receive from this antenna. And in the evening time, the device will receive from this antenna. So that concept is called as switched or uh, selection diversity. So whichever the antenna provides a better output, the receiver can receive from that particular antenna. Okay. So here you can see uh, there are two antennas of length lambda by four. They are connect. They are uh, they are combined together to form a multi-element antenna arrays. And these two antennas are separated by a distance lambda by two. Whereas in this diagram there are three antennas each of length lambda by two, and all these three antennas are separated by a distance of lambda by two, okay? So, so these type of antennas are called as multi-element antenna arrays. The next type of antennas that we'll be discussing is called as smart antennas. What is a smart antenna? So it's a quite advanced solution. Basically, smart antenna is also it is also an, an multi multi antenna elements. Okay, basically, smart antennas also uh, multi antenna elements, but they also in, they also include signal processing. They also performs signal processing, 
in order to optimize the radiation and reception pattern okay so 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 as they perform signal processing to optimize radiation and reception pattern these antennas are called as smart antennas okay and these antennas can adapt to changes these antennas can adapt to changes depending on the uh, reception power transmission conditions and signal propagation effects okay so depending on the reception power if the reception power is low okay then the antenna can adopt to receive even the signal with low power okay so like that dip for dip, depending on different conditions the antenna can adopt itself right so such antennas are called as smart antennas right let's see about the topic antennas so we have discussed <coughs> around four or five types of antennas so the first type of antenna that we have discussed discussed is isotropic radiator which is a theoretical reference antenna which radiates equally in all direction but no such antenna exists in real time and then we have discussed the dipole antenna dipole antenna uh, which uh, which which exhibits a uh, uniform omnidirectional radiation pattern in one plane and in other two planes uh, its radiation pattern is something like number 8 and then we have discussed the next type of antenna which is a directional antenna the dipole cannot be used in mountains valleys or in between buildings whereas directional antennas can be used in between buildings also and they are preferential to one particular direction for transmission and reception and then we have discussed sectorized antennas and then we have discussed multi element antenna arrays and finally we have discussed smart antennas right so let us stop here thank you